Because you're a prepper, you have your house ready for an emergency, but the emergency strikes when you're not at home. It's not a big problem because you know how to pack a get home bag and you have it ready to go. But did you choose the right bag to pack it all in? Any hiker will tell you that it's a critical choice choosing the right backpack for the job. And if you've chosen the wrong backpack for your get home bag, you may be setting yourself up for a whole lot of trouble. In this video, we're gonna talk about different bug out bags, different backpacks. It can make a huge difference in the success or failure of a trip. And when every choice counts in a state of emergency, having chosen the right backpack for the job might make the difference between getting home safely or dying trying. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. In a recent video, I was discussing all the things that are critical to put in a get home bag. And this is my get home bag, it's also my EDC pack. Uh, these are items that are critical to have on your person if you are in a situation where you're out and about at work, at the grocery store, running on uh, some kind of an errand, and an emergency situation happens, your vehicle may not be functioning for some reason, or it's just, you know, the roads aren't passable, and you essentially have to hike yourself back from wherever you are back to your home. You may have to pick up other family members and that video covers all the things that are critical to have in a pack for that kind of a situation so that you can get yourself from wherever you are, collect your family members and then get back home. If you wanna check out that video, put a link down in the description below. In this video, I wanna talk about other bits of planning that you need to have in place in order to execute a plan like that. Specifically, what is a good type of backpack to use as an everyday carry pack, as a get home bag. I've got four different types of backpacks here, which have all different sorts of attributes, all different sorts of designs, all different sorts of price ranges from very, very cheap to reasonably expensive. Uh, and we're gonna be talking about, you know, what are the pros and cons of these four different styles of backpacks. Before we get into that though, I wanna talk about three other items that uh, have to do with your ability to carry a backpack and go long distances, whatever that backpack may be. And that relates to your physical fitness, uh, you know, what you have on your shoes and what you're wearing for clothing and the ability to kind of move over, uh, you know, large stretches of area without, you know, incurring injuries. So let's talk first about just physical fitness. I made a video recently, which I would recommend that you check out if you want to kind of wet your feet into getting physically fit. Uh, you know, I'm not like some kind of like, you know, crazy muscle guy, but I, you know, have it where it counts. I, you know, do all sorts of hiking uh, in about a month, a little bit less than a month. I'm going to be uh, going up Mount Washington, which goes from about 2,000 feet above sea level to 6,000 feet above sea level. I'm going to be doing it on a, a mildly sprained ankle uh, that I've been trying to heal up, uh, you know, ahead of that. Uh, and I'm going to be taking some precautions so that I'll, you know, try to make it so that I don't injure my ankle on that trip. But the most important thing is to make sure that you're always in a state of reasonable physical fitness. So if you needed to do some kind of large hike, either an emergency or, you know, maybe you're just feeling squirrely and you want to get out that day and do some enjoyment hiking for yourself, you know, you're in a situation where you can do that. So check out down in the description below. I've got a link to a video where I go through my basic kind of fitness routine. I'm not going to say this is the best fitness routine in the world. You know, only I have the key to physical fitness. There's lots of great approaches and different Different approaches may work better for different people. This is what works for me. All it uses is a compression ring. So it's, a, you know, you don't need all sorts of, you know, gear and equipment. And it puts you in a situation where you have, you know, good flexibility, good endurance, and, uh, you know, you can do all the basic things that a human body really ought to be able to do. In addition to physical fitness, I think it's important to always have good footwear. Now, this is something I probably should have addressed in the other video where I was talking about things you should have with you if you need to hike home. I didn't address it because for me, I always wear appropriate footwear for hiking. These are my new favorite boots. Now, I don't always wear these boots out. Oftentimes, I'll just have like, you know, walking sneakers and that would be fine for doing hiking. In fact, most of the hiking that I do, I do in sneakers. But these are my, my new favorite uh, boots and I actually got them, be, you know, after I sprained my ankle, I wanted something with a little bit more ankle support. I'd highly recommend these. These are made by Timberland and I've been rocking them for a couple of weeks and I really love them. They're light, uh, they're they're thin profile. Uh, they don't get all hot and sweaty on your feet. Anyway, I, I, re I really like these boots. But whatever boots or sneakers you have, it should be something that you are comfortable in, uh, that you've broken in. Uh, you don't want to buy special hiking shoes. Just throw them in the trunk of your car if you ever need them. And then like the, 
you know, during an emergency situation is the first day that you're wearing those things. You're going to get all kinds of crazy blisters. You know, you may want to have uh, different kinds of socks to get paired uh, with uh, boots. In fact, these boots here, I have to wear like higher socks so my ankles aren't rubbing on the sides there. Normally when I'm going around, I just got these little, uh, these low cut socks, but for these, I've got higher cut socks. Whatever you're planning on wearing for a hike, that, you know, it's for enjoyment or for an emergency situation where you have to hike. These are things that you're, you should have broken in, you should be used to using, and during the emergency situation isn't the first time that you're wearing them because you're gonna have problems that way. It really takes, it takes a while, while to break in boots for hiking or sneakers or whatever, so make sure you do that. Get yourself a good pair of hiking boots, hiking sneakers, something like that. You know, there's all these things about like, well, this is waterproof, this is, you know, it's got steel toes or whatever, and you can get all into that, but you want something sturdy and comfortable. Those are the most important things. You know, if you get, get if you have to cross a river, you know, normally what I would do is I just take my, my shoes off and cross the river and then dry my shoes in, you know, I'm on the other side. These happen to be waterproof, but I mean, they're literally only waterproof up to this point right here, which gives you like three inches of waterproofing. <laughs> like, what does that really get for you? I mean, that's like, if you step in a puddle, you don't get your feet wet, but for any kind of le like real crossing or anything like that, you know, you're gonna have to take off your boots anyway and then put them back on on the other side. So I mentioned, I'm gonna be doing this hike up Mount Washington and because my ankle was a little on the weak side, I wanted to take some extra uh, precautions to try to uh, take some strain off that. And if you are new to hiking and if you're in an emergency situation and you, you know, are concerned about, you don't wanna get an injury, you don't wanna sprain in or roll an ankle or something like that, I'd highly recommend something like this. This is something I've never really messed with much before, but I've grabbed these these hiking poles for you know going up the mountain. So as I am, well, I've got some rocks right here. As I'm going from one level to another, I can take some weight on into my arms and it's very easy going down on those, uh, on those ankles. Uh, this also uh, helps with balance. So that if you're going over rough terrain, you've got multiple points of contact and uh, you know, you're going to be less likely to kind of roll, uh, you know, uh, roll off of a rock or trip or something like that and injure yourself. So having something like this, I think is a really nice asset to have if you're not used to hiking and it's just kind of a precaution. These are fold up ones. I'm going to put a link to the description below to these. These are not super expensive. I think they're like 30 bucks or something like that. Um, I think these are aluminum. Uh, you know, there's carbon fiber ones that are extra light or whatever, but um, you know, these are plenty light enough. They've got the wrist straps, they've got cork on the handle, so it's really comfortable. I've been uh, practicing with these for the past couple months. I really like these and they definitely feel like they make uh, hiking a lot safer because you're never in that situation where something rolls out from under you and kind of have to like skip to something else. Uh, these are a lot of uh, insurance. You don't have to have something like this though. If you don't want to even spend the $30, this is just what we call a stick. <laughs> you know, you can just get a stick from the woods. I've had this one for 30 years. I think, or something like that. So there's like a 30 year old uh, stick, you know, uh, people, you know, have all these different preferences. It's like, oh, you need to have pine, you need to have birch, you need to have oak, whatever. Oak wouldn't really be that great because it's kind of heavy, uh, strong, but heavy. This is just sumac, I think. It's like, which is like a really crappy kind of uh, wood that, you know, you wouldn't associate with like, oh, like high quality sumac. It's like a, this weedy bush kind of thing, but you know, it dried out and it's got a nice curve to it. If you make your own walking stick, I'd recommend, um, you know, this one doesn't have it, but create a little bump on the bottom uh, so that your hand kind of hits something when it's going. <laughs> wow, okay, <laughs> I won't comment on that. <laughs> so your hand will hit something and uh, that, that helps so that you don't have to squeeze it as much while you're working. If you have a kind of a little bump down there, you can just kind of wrap some uh, cloth around it and, and glue it down. It'll make it so that your hand has kind of something to rest on. People also use wrist straps for that. But in an emergency, situ in an emergency situation, even if you don't have hiking sticks, you know, just get something. In fact, uh, I had kind of a uh, hike that just kind of popped up the other day where I wanted to hike, uh, I think it was like uh, three kilometers uh, from one point to another because uh, I was going to get picked up by somebody. I was dropping a car off to get repairs and on the way I was like, hey, you know what? I could hike to this person's work and get a, a ride home. So, uh, you know, I had this impromptu kind of hike that I uh, threw together, which wasn't a problem because I always carry the proper shoes. I always have my you know, get home bag ready that has water and all the kind of things that I talked about in the other video. Um, 
And uh, I did not have a walking stick though. I did not carry that with me, but you know, you just walk along through the woods and you're gonna find some kind of a stick. Found a stick and uh, you know, use that for the hike. So having something like that can, uh, can aid you a lot in terms of you know, making, taking a little bit of weight off of your legs. So you kind of spread the burden throughout your whole body. Okay, so that's all the uh, basic physical stuff. You know, you wanna wear clothing and shoes that are appropriate for walking. Hiking sticks can be helpful. We're gonna talk a little bit later on about the idea of headwear. I addressed that a little bit in the other video, but I wanna talk a little bit more about that once we get into these packs. But first, let's just jump into these packs. Now, this pack is the pack that I use as my EDC pack. This is kind of my get home bag. This is the bag that I was going through in the other video when I talk about a lot of the things that are in here. Not everything that's in here, but I talked a lot about the different things that are in here. And this is the pack that I use, and it's okay. It's an all right pack. It's uh, it's got this little, uh, I don't know, I, I don't remember the names of anything. It's got this little uh, uh, buckle that goes across your chest that has a specific name that I forget. It's got these, these hip straps here that uh, allow you to uh, clamp it down on your hips a little bit. And when you clamp it down on your hips, it takes a little bit of strain off your shoulders, especially if you, you kind of open this up. And now most of the, uh, the weight is kind of down over here. And, uh, you know, it, it allows you to kind of throw the, throw the weight around and, uh, you know, you don't have to be holding it up with it, with this clip. So this is an okay pack. This is made by X, um, I'm sorry, not Expedition, Maxpedition. It's an okay pack. It's got lots of different little pockets inside and that's why I use it, but it is not, it's not a particularly comfortable pack. It's the most potentially the most expensive of all of these packs actually. And I bought it specifically as a EDC pack. I liked all the pockets inside. Uh, it was recommended by a viewer of this channel and I'm glad that they did. I, I do like it. I'm glad, I'm happy with the purchase, but when I'm gonna be doing a ton of hiking, I don't, um, you know, I don't use this pack because this is not the best pack for long distance hiking. The back, the back of it is kind of floppy. So if I put something in there that's maybe got a poke on it, it's gonna go right into my back. Uh, it, there's no rigidity to it. Uh, so all of the weight is kind of sliding down and it's, it's focusing right back down over here. And when you're carrying weight in a backpack, you really wanna get that weight kind of up higher. And that, that does a couple things. Uh, one, it tends to make you less balanced. <laughs> so that's a negative of having the weight higher in your pack. But what it will also tend to do is the higher you get the weight, it kind of comes up this way and it brings it closer to your center of mass. And if you can get the center of mass of the backpack closer in line with your center of mass, it makes it so you have less of this kind of feel of being like kind of pulled back and it puts a lot of strain on your lower back over there. And you know, for five, 10 minutes, a half an hour, is not that big of a deal. But if you're hiking hour after hour, you really start to feel it. This, ba uh, this bag also, because it's being pulled back like that, there's a lot of strain up in these straps right here. And it puts a lot of pressure on, you know, whatever this uh, muscle and tendon group is here on my shoulders. And uh, you know, after a long time, it would start giving me a headache. In fact, when I do wear this pack, and I'm going for an extended trip, and I, I occasionally do do that because I don't want to repack and everything's in here. I'll oftentimes find myself kind of grabbing this, pulling it forward, and doing, doing this for a lot of the hike where I'm kind of pulling, pulling the weight forward. You can do that a little bit with the straps here. You can tighten these down, and that kind of brings it up a little bit, and you can uh, kind of tighten this thing up a little bit, and that kind of helps to do that, but it's not as effective as some of these other packs. So while this pack made by Maxpedition uh, has a lot of pockets and it's really easy to use and on an ongoing basis, you know, a day to day, it works just fine where I'm, I'm not, I'm not wearing it on my back that much. Uh, and even for, you know, a, a hike up to an hour, you know, it's fine. It is not the best pack in the world. In fact, here's one of the, the most ridiculous things about all of these kind of packs. These are, um, uh, these little hip uh, pads here that, they're, they're called hip pads, but do they look like they're on my hips? My hips are down here, and these are up here. Uh, I don't really understand how this happened. I think that, like, th there are a lot of backpacks. Like, all these kind of tactical backpacks always are set up like this, so that your hip pads are over your stomach. And I think that maybe people had just, people who designed these backpacks had seen, like, real hiking backpacks, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit, these two big ones up here. They'd seen those and they, they saw, well, there's these little uh, flaps on the side and they got like a belt around them. So we're gonna put that on our backpack. But this backpack, um, well, I guess unless, 
Maybe it would work for a Lilliputian or something like that. But for anyone of um, your normal build, I'm, I'm not super, I'm slightly uh, above average height, but only slightly above average. I'm not like this giant. Um, uh, the distance between like, you know, where your shoulders are and where your hips are, these backpacks are just not long enough. So, uh, you know, you can't move where your shoulders are. So this, this hip uh, strap ends up, instead of being down here, is like up like eight, six, eight inches higher than it needs to be. And you know, you can, when you use like a regular backpack, you can tighten that up right around your hips. And you know, it's kind of a nice feeling. It transfer the, transfers the weight right onto your hips area there. This, you know, you, you know what you're doing when you tighten this up, it's like you're crushing your stomach. And that's not really one, you don't want to be transferring the weight into your stomach. It's just, it just doesn't work. So those, I know I'm tearing this backpack apart a lot and I like this backpack. I've had it for years, I'm happy with it. But these are some downsides of a backpack like this. So that is, that's that backpack. And again, if you wanna hear about all the things that are in here, go to the link down in the description below where I talk about all the stuff that I carry in there. Uh, next, I'm gonna talk about another backpack that's like that because this one, I forget what it is, but it's kind of pricey. It's like a couple hundred bucks for that backpack. Uh, and I bought it years ago and if you uh, amortize that over years, you know, it's, you know, a couple dollars a year or something like that, you know, uh, over the years that I've had it. Um, but this pack here uh, is kind of similar, but it is way cheaper. I, I, you know, I don't know the brand of this. This is one of these like just kind of generic brands. I'm gonna put a link to all these backpacks down in the description below uh, if you wanna check them out. I don't even know if this one's available, but there are lots of things like this. They're like generic tactical backpacks. They're small, and this is the one that my boy uses, or I'm always encouraging him to use. He doesn't take it out as much as I, I would like him to because uh, he's always bumming water off of me, and I'd love it if he started bringing his own water. Uh, but packs like this, they're okay. They're okay in the same way that this one's okay. They've got lots of pockets on them. Uh, you know, not as many bells and whistles. Like this one doesn't have that uh, strap that goes across your, uh, your sternum, is that the right word there? It doesn't have those, uh, those silly uh, uh, hip uh, pads and, and a hip belt, which is, would be like way up, like uh, way up high on this one. Uh, but you know, it gets the job done. And uh, you know, for the price, I think, I think this is like 30 to $50. I, I was years ago, it was probably like, it was $30 years ago, maybe more like $50 now. But like a, a backpack like this, you can store a lot of stuff in it and it's gonna be okay. Is it gonna be the most comfortable pack to wear for a while? No, it's definitely not going to be. But you know, if you wanna save some money, this is not a bad way to go. And that's all I'm gonna say on that. It's just, you know, it's similar to the other one, but it's cheaper and it's a little bit smaller. Uh, so that's another one. Now, if you really wanna save money, the best way to get a backpack is to go to a thrift store and wait for them to just, you know, have some backpacks there, whether it's a Goodwill or a Salvation Army. I've picked up a ton of these kind of pack, uh, backpacks. And th this backpack up here, I think I bought for like $3 or something like that. And you can find them at those kind of deals all the time, uh, you know, because there's always people that are aspirationally buying hiking equipment and then like years go by and they don't use it. So it like, you know, it, it ends up at a Salvation Army or a thrift store or something. And, uh, you can get a really good backpack for, you know, a couple bucks. This is, of all these packs here, this is the most comfortable pack that I've got up here. This is uh, what's called an external frame pack. It's got the, the frame right here, uh, you know, with all the, you know, the metal uh, bars you can see in here. And this is 100%, absolutely, the most comfortable pack of all of these. It's not like the highest, grade, you know, where it's like all the straps are like super nice, uh, you know, feeling your hands are, and all that. But in terms of uh, uh, ergonomics, comfort and all that kind of stuff, it's super, super comfortable. What this thing is doing is it's putting the, uh, uh, the hip strap, guess where? On your hips, <laughs> where it belongs. So yeah, see, this, this is a downside. It is kind of a cheap pack. So it's a little hard to uh, tighten, up the, uh, tighten up the buckles here. But once you get them where you need them, you're good, which is not there. I gotta tighten this one up a little bit more. But uh, this, uh, a pack like this is putting the pressure in all the places that it really should be. That's still not tight enough, but it's fine for uh, demonstration purposes. This one doesn't have a chest strap on here, but what's nice about this, and you know, I will tighten this up a little bit more to demonstrate, is you can really, really uh, transfer the weight from one place to another. Okay, that, that's feeling a little bit better here. So at, at this point, um, there, there's a lot of weight is in here and there's you know some weight up on my shoulders, but you can see I can do that with backpack and it'll swing back if I like totally uh, let go of it. But you can see 
it's all pretty much being held on my hips there. And that is a really nice feature on a backpack to be able to transfer the weight that's on your shoulders more, transfer it to your hips. When your hips get tired, transfer it back up to your shoulders and you kind of flip it back and forth uh, as you're hiking. This one also, there's a lot of airflow in your back so your back's not getting super sweaty. Another benefit of this is that anything you put in this pack Unlike these, where if I put something kind of bulgy in here, it's like bulging into my back. This one, it keeps the pack completely separate from my body. So whatever I put in that pack, it doesn't matter. You want to pack things, like I said, putting the, the heavier stuff up towards the top because that's going to make it so that the, uh, the center of mass of the pack is closer to the center of mass of your body. Uh, but Aside from that, it really doesn't matter how you pack this thing because there's not going to be anything uh, you know, poking into your back. So, you know, if you're looking for something that will allow you to comfortably walk great distances, I don't think you can do better than a pack like this, especially when you can get them at thrift stores for like a song. It's like $3, $4, $5. Uh, I think I've got like four or five of these because I keep seeing them at like great deals. I've, I've even got them for like, you know, like one or two bucks uh, where, uh, you know, it's just, it's such a wonderful tool and, uh, you know, it's such a great price. The one downside of a pack like this is that they don't frequently have a whole bunch of pocket organizers. And that is why I use this for my regular EDC. It's there I can organize things really nicely, but you can overcome that. And there are a couple different ways of overcoming that. One way of over overcoming that, and I'm just going to put this back. One way of overcoming it would be, uh, I have it all nicely setting up on a stand there, uh, would be to buy some kind of an organizer product. Uh, Canadian Prepper has his bug out rolls uh, and you could get a couple of those and slide those in and you could get everything organized inside so it's easy to find things. Because in an emergency situation, you don't want just a big pile of mess and you're like, oh, I don't know where it is. It's like, I'm, you know, I've got a big gaping wound on me and I need to find some gauze and you're, you know, you're digging through flashlights and granola bars. You want to be able to know where things are. So it's good to have things organized. So you could use an organizer like Canadian Preppers, uh, you know, bug out bag rolls, or you could just buy some of these cheap little backpacks and shove a bunch of cheap little backpacks in there. I could probably fit uh, three, maybe four of these packs in there. So I could buy a few of these you know, stock them with all sorts of things. Maybe I could get them color coded. So one could be like all my medical stuff. One could be my food stuff. One could be, you know, whatever stuff. Uh, you could get like different color coded backpacks and throw them in there. That would be a way of really having good organization uh, in, in a bag like that, but you know, not having to pay a premium uh, in price. And if you wanted to pull out any of these packs and break them out or whatever, you'd have that option as well. So uh, that covers this backpack. Excellent backpack. Frame backpacks are great because they sit on your body so much uh, nicer. Uh, one other downside with this is that it really, it's it's not really gray man. Uh, it, you know, if you walk around with that, you're gonna look like some kind of like, you know, Johnny super tramp that's, uh, you know, being a hobo walking around. You're definitely gonna call attention to yourself. So that's kind of a downside of that. These packs are a little bit more gray man where you're gonna blend in a bit. The, this one here is kind of a hybrid between the two. Uh, this is also a frame pack, but it's what's called an internal frame pack. You don't see all those uh, bars and, uh, and you know, frame on the outside. What you've got is you've got some frame pieces that are on the inside inside these little shafts. There's these pieces of bendable aluminum that you can kind of uh, uh, contour to your spine. You fit them uh, on the inside there. This one's adjustable, so you can adjust the distance between your shoulders and your hips, which is critical because everybody's got a different size. Um, you, know, you just kind of like, you know, redo this little uh, strap system here. This is going to fit on your back really nicely, uh, this internal uh, frame pack. And this is something you could probably pick up at thrift stores as well. I, I don't tend to see internal packs at frame stores for whatever reason. Maybe people hold on to them more. I, I tend to see these external frame packs get thrown out, maybe because these are kind of the cheaper things and people you know, graduate up to these. But it's uh, a graduation in some ways, but on, not in others. One downside of this versus the external frame pack is you don't get anywhere near as much airflow behind your back. And you know, they're not bad. You know, th this one here, you know, it's got some airflow uh, and, I'll, and I'll show a couple different ways of wearing it so you can uh, increase that airflow. But um, it, um, you know, it, it's nowhere near as breezy as the other one. Uh, one nice thing about this is that uh, it being a little bit more rigid, remember how uh, earlier I, you know, I had the, the uh, shoulder straps on here and it's all, now everything's like snug down and these straps are nice so I can kind of just snug them up while it's on me. Very comfortable, very comfortable feeling. It hugs my back. If I'm kind of moving over terrain, this one, because it's closer to me, I, 
I have a greater sense of balance than if I have this frame pack, which is a little bit further off me. So my balance is a little bit better uh, with this one. Um, but one, one cool thing about this, in addition to like having the better balance, is that uh, it's really easy to do that, that uh, weight transfer thing. This one has the uh, strap across the chest, so I can completely open up this. And now all the weight is just gonna be up in this area. Because these are contoured really well, it's really, instead of pulling backwards at me and like pinching on my nerves, it's a nice solid downward compression. So it's very comfortable in that regard. But sometimes even with that, your shoulders get a little bit uh, you know, sore. So as I'm hiking, I'll just put this back on, pull this out, I can loosen these up, and I can even do that and I can kind of hike for a while. Now, if I had a lot of weight in there, that wouldn't fly. This whole thing would fall backwards. But you can uh, just kind of loosely keep your, your hands in there, you know, even kind of keep this uh, together, but really loosen this up. And you can see none of the weight is on these shoulders here. All the weight is down here. And that's really the big benefit of either of the frame backpacks is the ability to transfer the weight from your hips up to your shoulders and then back to your hips again. And constantly as you're walking, you'll be flipping it back and forth. Uh, another nice thing, uh, just to go back to the uh, uh, hips only uh, orientation, is this really allows you to air your back out a little bit like that. And uh, the, you know, when you get sweaty, you know, it's not just a, a feeling of discomfort, but like with things rubbing on you, uh, you know, you can start getting a rash or something like that. So you really want to allow yourself to kind of dry off as you're using this. Um, one downside of this frame pack um, is uh, that's common uh, with this frame pack is that, uh, you know, this one doesn't have a lot of pockets uh, on it. You know, there's a couple little side pockets where I'll usually have a water bottle. There's a pocket up at the top here, and then there's a big uh, internal cavity here. Uh, these kind of frame packs don't tend to have as many pockets as, uh, you know, some of these like tactical kind of backpacks. And uh, again, the, the way to remedy that is to just, you know, put other uh, ways of storing uh, different, uh, different things uh, inside of them. So, that, I think, covers all the different types of backpacks. We've got these two tactical ones. You know, this one's more expensive, and this one's a little bit cheaper. The, the pros of these, you've got lots of pockets. They're kind of a gray man kind of thing. Uh, the cons of them is they're nowhere near as comfortable as the frame packs are, are going to feel uh, on your body. Uh, your, your, your balance isn't going to be uh, as good. Uh, you know, if you're hiking over a long period of time, it's really going to start to wear on you. Um, but they do, they do make it really easy to organize and you are going to blend in with people. I, although I don't know, with all these rags and everything on here, maybe I'm kind of defeating uh, that, that benefit. And with the uh, frame backpacks, uh, the benefit of those, you can oftentimes find those on sale because people buy them aspirationally, maybe when they're in college and then they end up getting rid of them later. So you can get really good deals on the frame packs. Uh, they're going to be super comfortable on you. They're going to be able to really effectively transfer the weight between your hips and your shoulder. And, and remember, all these kind of tactics dual packs when they got those flaps on the side i've never experienced any of these that ever have that kind of proper distancing or that ability to properly distance or like uh, like in this one here in particular you can adjust it to make sure that those hip uh, uh straps actually go on your hips instead of just compressing down on your stomach which is just completely ridiculous so they're going to be much more comfortable but you you know you got to pay for it with you know you look a lot more conspicuous uh while you're walking around with those uh, they tend to be, you know, bigger in general, uh, you know, so I, I think that that's, you know, kind of a downside. It's nice to have the more space, but also, you know, it's, it's just bigger and bulkier. Uh, and, uh, you know, the organization uh, in them is not as awesome as it is in some of these kind of tactical packs. So that's it. I hope you found this video helpful. Again, remember, beyond all of this stuff, just staying in good physical hiking shape uh, has so many benefits. One, in an emergency, I missed my finger, in an emergency, you're going to be ready to actually you know, use your body uh, in order to, you know, save your, your life, your family's life. You're going to have that ability to actually function. Uh, in addition to that, it's going to allow you to in appreciate your life because you're going to be able to do different things that, you know, if you are out of shape, you just can't do. You can't go on that, uh, you know, that hike through the woods. You can't go on that hike through the mountain if you don't have that kind of physical fitness that allows you to do that. And the third benefit of being physically fit are all the health benefits that come along with that, that have nothing to do with, um, you know, emergency preparedness and survival and, uh, you know, enjoying your life, but just, you know, staving off illness. The healthier that you are, the more fit that you are, the better your overall well-being is going to be in all aspects of life. So that's the end of this video, with the exception of I wanted to talk about 
hats. I think that broad brimmed hats are a great way to protect yourself from sun when you're walking, uh, you know, extended uh, distances and you need to be out in sun. I mentioned I have some uh, clothing in here that can cover a lot of my body, but it's good to have a broad brimmed hat. And the one thing I wanted to mention is if you ever are hiking with a backpack that happens to be very tall, the hats tend to hit it. So that's another thing to consider. If you are a big fan of broad brimmed hats, and I certainly am, you have to understand that you, if you're packing one of these big frame packs, they have the ability to go up really high, but you're gonna have to figure out what you do with your hat. It's good to protect yourself from the sun, but you have to always have your hat agree with your pack. That's it, and thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.